Bob McCown. It's John Shannon. It's the uh, radio talk program, quick, podcast, talk quick. whatever. I am talking talk quick. quick. Talk as quick. fast as I can. <laughs> uh, Zeisberger and DuPont, another look at uh, the playoff rounds. Uh, it'd be nice if we got them right at the beginning of the rounds, but it's okay. Well, the, the rounds, they kind of overlap now. So you have to you, you have to kind of find a way to fidget it in. And it's Friday. And the producer thought that the Friday round table made some sense. Yeah, I got to have I got to sec- have second thoughts about the producer. Mike Zeisberger of NHL.com, Kevin Paul DuPont of the Boston Globe. And we come back after these messages. Uh, and so we commence for another day uh, to uh, end the week. Uh, yours truly, Bob McCowan. That's John Sh- Shannon, somewhere over there on the screen, if you're watching. Hello, Robert. Mike Zeisberger of NHL.com. Kevin Paul DuPont of the Boston Globe uh, join us. Um, This is um, a recurring meeting that the four of us uh, seem to have. Uh, Before we get into the four remaining playoff series and the uh, pros and cons of uh, all things involved with that, uh, the Shifley hit on Evans uh, the other night was the main topic of conversation across the uh, National Hockey League. And Shifley winds up with four games. Question one, is it the right number, at least approximately, DuPont? Not not by a long stretch. I had it at 10. uh, (laughs) And I know he has no priors. If we're going by the standard standard rhythm here, my bet then was that it would come one side or the other of three. So I had it two to four. Uh, but on a personal level, no, because I, I just want this stuff done away with, you know, it's, it's yet another series, another playoff where, uh, all the great stuff of the playoffs gets hijacked by an idiot who decides he's going to blow somebody up, has no chance of stopping the goal, has no intention of playing the puck or trying to strip the puck. Just his intention there is to blow the player up and hurt him. And he succeeded. And why, why a sport tolerates that? is beyond me and what and and my only belief now after all these decades of watching it as a kid as a fan then then as a journalist is it's just a sport that doesn't believe in itself enough which i think is nuts but that's the only conclusion i can make seisberger well first of all i think uh you know um i respect kevin so much but his take is kind of oozing with irony a little bit for the fact that um he covers one of my favorite players in the NHL, but Brad Marchant, who uh, we've seen kind of cross that line a few times. But um, no, in, in all seriousness, it's kind of what I thought was going to happen here. Um, you know, whether whether he was going to get it or not, uh, that's that was up to the, you know, um, for them to decide. And it was four games. Uh, Bob, I think one of the things that, that probably – went into this is the fact that throughout that third period, Mark Shifley looked like, uh, you know, there was a bird up his, you know, what, Um, you know, he had gotten a penalty earlier in the period. He just had this kind of crazed look in his eyes. Like he had lost control of his emotions. Um, And I think that plays into it because like Kev said, there was no attempt to get at the puck. Um, you know, the puck, for all intents and purposes, was in the net already. So mm-hmm. uh, right. it's, it's just something that has to be, it, it, I agree with Kevin, it's something that has to be uh, taken out of the game. And, you know, we talk a lot about what, what the league does in terms of the punishment, but I think the NHLPA has to look at this too, because it's their own members that are, that are cheap-shotting their own members. And, and at some point, They have to say, whoa, guys, you know what? We're all going, you know, we know that you're, those are your competitors. You want to play hard, but, you know, injuring these guys, having guys taken off on the, on a stretcher, um, that's got to be a warning sign um, for the PA as well. One of the things that the National Hockey League has done, and I, I guess in many ways, all sports have done is mitigate the punishment in the playoffs as if a game suspension in postseason is significantly more punitive than a suspension during the regular season. And from a competitive standpoint, that argument holds water. The problem I have is that punishment should not be mitigated by the timing of the offense, Um, at least theoretically in my mind. If 
I don't know whether you guys agree in any way, shape, or form, but if this was a regular season incident, surely it would be more than four games, wouldn't it? DuPont, to you first. Oh, sure. A- a- absolutely. You know, and again, it's just another one of these contradictions that they're, they're using a different currency because we're in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. And so, why? Yeah, well, and again, I only go back to it's in, it's been institutionalized, right? This is this is the way they've done it. You know, we watch we watch watch officiating in the playoffs when it gets the overtime. Anything goes. Why? I mean, if if anything, you've got a bigger audience, a more engaged audience, and now the audience is is learning. And and I did I I learned it too when I started watching at age six and eight. Oh, this is the way it's done, right? The guy puts his whistle in his pocket, and everybody, you know, two hands, everybody. This is great. Well, it's not great. It, it, it just, it, to me, it just cheapens the product. Again, it's, it, it goes back to faith. And, 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 uh, and ultimately, good players get, get beaten up. Uh, they get eliminated from series. The play suffers. The attention goes to places that it doesn't have to. Uh, and I, I, I don't get it. it. Seisberger, throw your two cents in on that one. Well, you know, uh, What's the three key words that we've seen for, for decades, Kev, that we, that we hear when the playoffs start? Quote, let them play, unquote. Um, whether, whether we agree with it or not. And, uh, you know, I, I think that, that they're looking for consistency. I think that's, I, I think, Bob, in this whole thing, that's what I think the players want more than anything, mm-hmm. is just be consistent from start to finish, if you're going to call something in the first period, call it in the third period. Well, you know, it, it's interesting because, uh, you know, I know Kevin's the hanging judge, so that's okay. I mean, you, you we're allowed to have a hanging judge every once in a while. Um, uh, the, the concept of longer suspensions, let's remember, uh, the first suspension ever levied by this commissioner was, correct me if I'm wrong, 21 games, I think was the number. Um, and, uh, it, it, it changed what Dale Hunter did against Pierre Turgeon. Um, and the outcry was horrific. Uh, and, and, and we also talk about players policing themselves. This is a, this is a league that polices itself. The managers have so much say in how the game should be played. This mm-hmm. is, the, this is the 31 soon to be 32 guys sitting around a table saying, this is the standards we want to create a competitive league, rightly or wrongly. I'm, I'm not having an opinion. I am telling you exactly what the process is. Uh, and they want, they want a certain standard in the regular season because they, want, they don't want their players to be overly injured for 82 games when we get back to an 82-game schedule. And then they want the intensity of playoff hockey, which I think we admit, even, for instance, last night's Bruin Islander game was really darn entertaining played at that mm-hmm. level. And, and, and for all those people that are starting to watch the game, looking for consistency, there's a, there's another group of people saying, wow, this is fun. This is great to watch. This is on almost on the verge of a circus and it's real. It's not like wrestling. It's real. And I think that, I think that there's a, there's a, a component of the, of the audience that actually comes and enjoys playoff hockey for that very reason. Well, that's going to happen under any circumstance. Sorry, Kevin, but that's going to happen under any circumstance. Not necessarily, Bob. Oh, sure it is. I mean, in any sport, I mean, you're going to have, you're going to have diehards who are so in love with the game that it doesn't matter what the quality of the product is. I can take any crappy game in the playoffs or in a regular season and find you a hundred, a thousand, 50,000 people who will, who think, oh, that was a great game. You know, we can sit here and argue the merit of a one nothing game versus a 7-6 game oh, in sure. any sport. And, and you're going to get a divergence of opinion on it. But, here, here, so, but, here's, but here's the thing. I mean, and, and, I mean here, you know, you and I, and for the, for the most part, uh, Mike, uh, live in southern Ontario. And um, coming off of a, a seven-game series that the Maple Leafs played, w- what was the talk of the town? Was where was where was the playoff hockey in the Toronto Maple Leafs? Where was that edge? Where was all of that? Where was the pushback? I mean, I mean, Brendan Shanahan admitted his team didn't have enough grit to play playoff hockey. Um, that and, and that's a reality of what we're into. It's not a question of well, they they do set to you know the, it, it's subjective. They tell you from the beginning of time 
this is the way we're going to do the regular season. And this is the way we're going to do the playoffs. You better adapt and you better be prepared to adapt because in the end, a lot of people, a lot of people do think that it's pretty entertaining. And there's no question it is entertaining. I, I, I think, I think we're mixing a lot into the porridge here. Sure we are. And, and some yeah, of it is, some of it is as, as the journalist or the fan in the stands, I, I, what I don't want to see to, to the officiating piece is the ticky tack calls get called all the time and, and the game has no flow to it, no form to it. Uh, yeah, there's the inconsistency part of it, but if it's consistently ticky tack calls, I don't want that either. Uh, last night, uh, uh, Clutterbuck, put, Clutterbuck puts a big hit on good, clean, stiff, terrific hit on Carlo and Carlo yeah. ends up, it looks as like he's concussed. I have to believe he is. I got no problem with it. I mean, right. that, it, it, you know what? That's playoff hockey. Fr- frankly, I see a lot of it in January too, or January most years. So I, I've got no, I mean, I, I just don't want it to go to wrestling. I don't want it to be rollerball and, and demolition derby and guys stretch it off. So there's, there's 90, probably 95% of this, which is great stuff. And if there's a disparity between playoffs and regular season, I get that because it means more, right? The, t- the clock is ticking. Sure. I've got to get myself to 16 W's, right? So sure, that, that's what, the way it should be. Even the NBA, as dreadful as that league is, that happens in the NBA too. So, you know, I'll accept that. It's just these far ends of ticky tack bullshit calls that mean nothing, that accomplish nothing other than frustrating players, fans, and everybody else. And then guys, you know, this idiot from The Shining, Sheffley, who goes out and, and, and tries to dismember somebody. And really, look at it. Get that picture of Jack Nicholson. You know, I'm home, honey. That's him. That's him. Crazy. Crazy. Guys. And I have to listen to fans saying that's hockey. What? Uh now that's so what, well, what you're saying, Kev, is that you don't and as a Bostonian, especially, you don't long for the day of Mike Milbury climbing into the stands at MSG and beating a guy over the head with a don't, don't get don't, don't get Kev, game anymore. Don't and, get and, Kevin going on this one, Mike. Lindsay, Come on. Lindsay, that's, 40 that's the whole plus point. Get him ago. going. You know, <laughs> 40 plus years ago. They also have electronic Zambonis now. I mean, things <laughs> change, people change. And I, you know, I'm a I'm a two-mouthed you know whater about some of this stuff because as a kid, I loved it. 1969, the playoff series with Toronto, Bloodbath and Forbes Kennedy taking on everybody but the pizza vendor. Terrific, right? I loved it. But that was 1969. Yep. You didn't like Pat Quinn on Bobby R. You be honest now. No, I, I hated it. And, and again, that, but you know what? I'd hate that today. I would. I, I, I did that to be Bobby Orr. It could have, could have been anybody. You know, you know it's, it's these moments. And that's, I'm glad you bring this up because this is what's irked me for a while here. It's, it's moments when you can be a predator and act just with no impulse control yeah. and actually go out to hurt people. You know what? I can, I can do that at Home Depot if the urge hits me. You know, I, I don't like this guy looking over the paint can in aisle three. I can go two-hand him, too. No different. You know, unsuspecting person doing nothing other than yep. shopping. Sure, why not? I got a couple of things here. I, I tell you what, I don't want to go to your Home Depot, Kevin. That's the one thing. I, <laughs> I, want, to, I want to stay. I'm going to go to Lowe's from now on just for that very <laughs> reason. <a> lawnmower. <laughs> I mean, let me address the, the you, you use the phrase ticky-tack fouls. Um, where call I, the rule book. Call the rule book. Well, I don't see why a call in the regular season should be different from a call in the playoffs. Um, I, I'll go beyond that, and I'll tell you. Um, I watch hockey, generally speaking, dispassionately. I'm not a big fan. I'll watch a big event. I'll watch a game if I have to. But if the game is on and I'm sort of half-ass paying attention and there's a penalty and there's a power play, I'm probably going to pay attention. Why? Because something might happen, like a goal. And at the end of the day, it's the entertainment business and I want to be entertained and not much entertains me with hockey other than goals being scored and preferably good goals. Um, Ones that I might remember for more than... 15 minutes but do you think you're the norm or do you think you're an exception well 
that is a question that has, is of no consequence to me because I don't care about anybody else, as you well, well know. We, we know that. <laughs> We've known that for 20 years, Bob. I, I, I Another news, the sun rises in the east. <laughs> That's right. It does feel pretty special. <laughs> I, I don't give a crap about any of the three of you or any of the uh, three and a half million people that might watch this podcast. You, you're going to do what you're going to do, and, you, and, and you're entitled to your opinions, um, however stupid they might be. But I want... I want entertainment and power plays give me entertainment. So if you're, if you're not going to call the ticky tack fouls and you're going to have, you know, three minor penalties and three power plays in a playoff game, and that's not far from the truth. Um, the playoffs mean a lot less to me. And then you play, you know, you, you can go out there and play um, ball hockey, um, kitty bar the door for like the Toronto Maple Leafs did for, 50, 60, 82 games. Then you come to the playoffs and all of a sudden it's one nothing, two, one, three, two. Um, it's all defensive hockey. Why is that more entertaining? I don't get it. The only thing that's entertaining is the value of the of the wins and losses in the game. Well, as a, as a hockey fan, would you I rather still have to be your... entertained? Okay. So as a hockey fan, when you when you are a hockey fan, Bob, would you rather lose seven six or win one nothing? I as a hockey fan? Yeah. I want to be entertained. So seven, six is almost assuredly going to be more entertaining than oh, yeah. one, nothing. No, I know. Are but you, but you there, I think there are tons of people that when it gets to playoff time, all they care about is really their team winning. I mean, it, it, the, 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 it changes. It, it changes. Well, all that does the is dynamic. demonstrate the stupidity of hockey fans then. It doesn't, you know, it I does, don't, it doesn't mean that, you're right. No, winning just means you're right. It doesn't mean you're right either. Are you going to watch any television show that doesn't entertain you? It, sports, it, like every other show, has got to be entertaining. Sure, it does. I agree with you hundred percent. And well, and to be, devil's, to be devil's advocate here, Bob, and I know you're uh, you're a big baseball guy, so I'll take a shot here. But you want to talk about entertainment? What do they put the? When does something actually happen? What is the percentage? Twenty six percent, I think. I heard of balls that are actually put in play. I mean, Don Mattingly said it's almost unwatchable. So I, I don't disagree. Z, here. I'm with you. Uh, we're talking hockey, so that's what we're focused yeah, on. Yeah. But I'm not trying to suggest that hockey is the only sport that has the same problem. You know, in essence, they all do. And the reason they all do is because you got a bunch of guys who have been in the business forever and believe the product is perfect and are not prepared to admit that oh, it isn't. Oh, no, I don't, I don't think that number, at all. What is the number one league in the world, the National Football League. What is well, certainly in North America? What is the difference between the National Football League and every other professional sport? They are not afraid to change to change the rules. Yeah, yeah. they are un completely and utterly unafraid to change the rules, and they make a change. And if they it doesn't work or they don't like what they saw, they change it back or they change it to something else. I have no particular love for the National Football League. It's 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 completely money driven, but I admire them for that, mm -hmm. and and I will decry all the other leagues for being so resistant to looking themselves in the mirror and saying, "This is this is a problem. We need to change it." And I would say, Bob, when the salary cap era came on, if if you recall, that the NHL did do a few things. They took out the the center ice red line for the two line pass so that at least there would be more stretching, more action and be more North South instead of East West. So I do think that the NHL has attempted to do it, but maybe uh, it just hasn't gone far enough. I, I tell you what, when you look at the changes since the lockout of 2004, the changes the league has made across the board, whether it be the rule changes that have increased the speed of the game, uh, it also created an ancillary part of maybe they were got to be too fast, and and all of these all of these head hits and all these hits are a a, 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 a side effect of that. Uh, plus, what has happened with video review in the game? I mean, I, I don't think that there's lack of desire to change. I think that the problem becomes oh, there that, sure is no. I don't. I, no, I, well, first of all, first of all, I know there isn't. But what that what there is within the NHL is the, the, the real, real cautionary side of this to say, okay, if we do this, 
what happens there? And that becomes the real challenge. I mean, they, when they move to, to Mike's point, when they, when they took the red line out and they allowed a lot more speed in the game, they also took the fact that the goaltenders couldn't handle the puck behind the goal line very much. When, when and that changed, and oh, that changed the speed. Oh, bravo, a ton time. Bravo. oh no, no. It's, it, it's easy to be kept a negative over there. It's really easy to be, well, captain no, negative. It, but don't it, talk to, it, don't it's say a lot easier don't, for you to be captain positive and defend everything no, that the game say, does. Don't because say that they don't involved in it all your life. Don't say that they haven't tried to change when they have tried to change, Bob. That's all I'm saying. There is, there is the desire to change and make the game entertaining every day. There we is. We are here. I want to pawn to get in here because I'm more interested in what he has to say so far than either of you two dum dums. But as usual, um, an indictment on both we, sides. We <laughs> are we are here discussing the merits of the change of the elimination of the red line and the two line pass, which happened when Zeisberger? Uh, Fifteen years. Five oh six. Yeah, that's right. Fifteen years ago. We are talking, you are citing a rule that is 15 years old as evidence that the National Hockey League no. is not navel-gazing and is willing to make change. Okay. I defer to Captain Positive on this. Uh, can we have Mr. DuPont uh, weigh in on uh, all of this nonsense? Well, there's a, there's a number of things to weigh in, and I have to make a list. This is what age does. You have to make a list so you remember from one moment to the other. <laughs> Attaboy, whatever you need, pal. Yeah. <laughs> Kevin's been writing notes all, all, all show. But to build, to build on your point about the NFL having it right, and, the, and again, the NFL is government. It, it, you know, they just go down to the cellar and print more money if they need it. Exactly. Uh, so, but to build on, build on one point there, do you think, guys, the NFL would suffer Shifley for more than three seconds? Shifley would be gone. Gone. There'd be yeah. no. There'd be no suffering. This is a league that protects the quarterback from a, from a blindside hit, right? So, and that's, that is what I love about the NFL. They, they get, they, they don't suffer any fools because they don't have to, because they can go down to the cellar and crank out the money. Uh, crank and crank out another one, another player. That's yeah, right. That's a, that's it. a bigger part. Absolutely. And that's a very good point because the feeder system in the U S colleges, and another point you are and uh, non-guaranteed contracts. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, and another point about the officiating this, this before we lose it is, you know, not only is there this sort of different rules over here for the postseason, regular season, the rest of it. How how about how about watching McDavid get hacked and whacked? You know, one end of the rink to the no calls, nothing. Right, superstars, Crosby. I've watched it all the time. Right, uh, it, it, you know, they, they, they call they call or don't call based on reputation of the player on his skill level. Or his attitude. What watching and, and Zeiss, you brought up Marchand, and a lot of Marchand stuff has just been crap, right? It, it hasn't been out to maim people. The slew footing at times is, is despicable. But you know, going and, and licking uh, you know Leo Komarov across the visor. Good luck to you. I mean, who can? Well, so that, that's <laughs> you know, all that crap is something else. But what watching their superstars get fouled, and, and this very much speaks to change that needs to be in marketing those are the guys you want to play as long as they can and instead they just there's this attitude of oh you know he'll get by it he's the fastest guy in the game and he'll he'll find a way you know wrong well have we uh have we done enough on this topic i didn't even know we had a topic on this but well, did, did, what did you think, bobby you haven't given your you know your your, your papal uh, decision on Declaration. the four games Yes, come on now. Okay, on Kevin, the, the hanging judge has 10, you know, and what do you have, Bob? Life. <laughs> I shouldn't be drinking coffee when you say that, okay? Well, you know, I mean, come on. if it's, do I think it's the worst offense I've, I've ever seen? I do not. <laughs> um, I don't think it's anywhere near the worst offense I've ever seen. Having said that, it was a reckless, dangerous play that um, should not be permitted. And the problem you think I you have, think it is? I think it's a hundred percent permitted. How, how do you? How do you? How do you how, why is he suspended then? He's got a four-game suspension. Jets could be out of the playoffs in four games. He it could be suspended. done. He is suspended, but the action remains sustainable. That, that that's their mistake always in these things is they don't they don't come out definitively enough to change behavior 
this will happen again. It might happen to him, although he doesn't have that kind of record, which is kind of scary in itself. But this, this won't deter anybody from doing it. It won't. Shifley is one of the best players on the Winnipeg Jets. And he got a four-game suspension. If Claude Thamalfachuk, some fifth-line winger, did the exact same thing, what does he get? Maybe he gets six games. The point of the matter is that the National Hockey League quite obviously is not is is concerned about high profile players will always lean towards giving them lighter suspensions and it has no desire to change the way the game is officiated viewed um arbitrated judged it 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 will tell you it doesn't like these 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 hits it will provide a suspension that is commensurate with what the media and public opinion believes that you should get, but it won't go any further. Hmm. Well, it, Bob, you, you, you just said that, you know, they, they're a little lighter on their star players and I, you know, um, are you going to deny that? I found a lot of the reaction to this is like four games. That's like 12 games during the regular season. How could they possibly give Shifley that many there? There's actually, I, I found in the reaction to this, and you can refer to these people for their opinions as idiots, uh, as I know you will, but... Um, and, put, inclu I, and by the way, including including the coach of the Winnipeg them, Jets. Is, yeah, I think a lot of people have the reactions from them is, wow, you know, he had, he had never done... He didn't have a history or a track record of doing anything like this. They thought it was harsh, um, you know, and, and I actually thought that in this decision... Um, you know, uh, it was irrelevant whether he was one of their better players or not. Well, you know, under the terms of the law on the street, um, a first-time offender for a minor offense is sometimes given leniency. But the further up the significance yeah. pole you go, mm -hmm. the less that leniency becomes applicable. And second-time offenders, third-time offenders, for anything other than a, you know, a capital offense, um, they're, they're, the punishment is going to increase. So I understand Shoffley is a first-time offender. The significance to me of that is nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, if you get to a third or a fourth offense, and there are plenty of guys in the National Hockey League that are there now and more. That's your buddy Nas. That's your buddy Nas. Well, there's a perfect example. How many times does, does this guy get to do what he has done repeatedly and come back. You know, uh, Kevin said it earlier. The National Football League wouldn't tolerate it. They just say, get out. When is the National Hockey League going to do that? When is the National Hockey League going to re recognize that you've got a an ongoing problem with Naz Kadri and that he is showing no indication that he's prepared to, willing to, or capable of changing and how many tickets does Nazem Kadri sell wherever he plays? And the answer is minimum zero. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what are you keeping him around for? What is the mysterious thing that allows this league to do this crap over and over again? And I'll go back to the same thing. They don't want to hear from you or me or, or any of us. They want to run their league and they think they do it perfectly and they're going to keep doing it that way. And we can sit here and yak about it, which is perhaps entertaining, at least for us. <laughs> it's going to change nothing. It's going to change a single thing. Well, Look, my, final, my final word on this would be, and I'm going to circle back to something John said, okay? Most of this stuff, if you've been up to enough general managers meetings, okay, and owners meetings, this stuff is dictated by, by including rules, is dictated by what the GMs want and what the owners want. Um, and, and so this, is the, this goes far beyond the front That's office. the NHL. That's the league. Mm -hmm. I'm not suggesting that Gary Bettman is at fault. I'm not suggesting that Coley Campbell is at fault or anybody else at the top of the food chain. 
it's the game. It's the league. Mm. You know, last point, I mean, years ago, you could not go to a, an OHL game and not see a brawl. Six fights. Six yeah. fights, yeah. Oh, you're right. Could not do it. That's gone. Things are changeable if you're willing to, to commit to changing. Mm -hmm. And I submit that the National Hockey League just, they're afraid of their own shadows. They're afraid to change the game, afraid they're going to lose fans. Uh, they believe the product is perfect and that they're right. And it, so they I, don't change. Where I disagree with you here is they don't believe that it's perfect. They don't believe in themselves. They, yeah, they, what do you mean by that, Kevin? That's fair enough. Uh, underneath, I'll buy that. This is their, I think this is their fatal flaw. They don't believe how good it is. I mean, there is no other sport in, in playoff time, especially that has as many subplots, intriguing storylines yeah. yep. as the playoffs because mm -hmm. the injury factor, right? The physical factor, the serendipity factor, the, the ball doesn't go in the basket by mistake in the NBA. You know, I, I watched the winning goal by Marshand last night. No way that should end up in the net. There's, there, there's another. So there's, it is a circus. It's a wonderful circus mm -hmm. in and of itself. It, all this crazy crap can happen. Puck goes in the net, stupid call, no call. Nutcase takes a run, right? All that stuff is going, you can't find that anywhere, anywhere. So why not believe in it? Why, why not why, why not govern it properly, suffer no fools, and let it ride? Here, I here. But well yeah, said. I, I, I couldn't, I, couldn't I, have said it better. Funny, I, 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 I would, I, would uh, I, I don't think you're wrong, but then I, I would say to you, I think that's what they're doing. I, 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 everything you said, Kevin, I, 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 I can't disagree with. I love that. I love that aspect of of what playoff hockey is particularly but what is it that they're not doing then that says they don't believe in themselves well they, why, or, no i want kevin right, to answer this kevin, i want kevin yeah, to please because because that's a great question it's 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 degree it's 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 that they it's that they only pick at it four games for shifley is picking at it the right okay. thing to do is for the commissioner to walk in and says i'm the commissioner for the good of the game this guy is out of here, out. I suffer no fools. And I'm not gonna have the product desecrated by this. I'm not gonna have this, this kid maimed by an idiot, out. And I'll see you in September. We'll talk about you coming back next year. And then you got 30 general managers bitching at him and the only one that doesn't is the guy who, who was the victim of that play. And, well, and, and, you also, and you also have the Players Association who uh, who who are now your business partners? It's not a question of uh, you know uh, you know lord and slave anymore. Um, it, it, you have a business partner that says, "Hold on now, you, you know when when we get more than five games, we get to go to a tribunal." I mean, there has to. I, I I'm not disagreeing with you, Kevin. I just wanted you ex to you to ex to explain it because what's going to have to happen for this to go to that level is it has to be collectively bargained. It has to be collectively bargained yeah. and the players have to buy into it. The players have the players and the players association have to want to do it too. And that, and, and let's give it a try, but I'm, I'm, I don't think it's as simple as Gary walking. In fact, I would tell you the last co collective bargaining agreement said to Gary, you can't walk in and do it anymore because checks and balances appeals third party arbitrator you know you know and well now you're getting into the, the all you're getting into is no, the stupidity but... that the players are just as stupid as everybody else and, and arguably more stupid and that is evidenced every time there is a hearing um where you know the players association will defend the accused to the nth while there is somebody lying in a hot, one of their other uh, representatives or one of the other players they represent is lying in a hospital bed. Explain that. Well, I can't do it. I can't, Bob. You can't. No, I can't. But I, I'm just and saying. All, all it says I, is who gives a flying fado what the Players Association says because they're uh -huh. speaking out of both sides of their mouth at the same time. Nazem Kadri does this, what, three times in four years and then actually appeals? 
Well, then, but did you read the ruling? Admits to a doing it. He just says he got too many games. So well, he, he actually says, yeah, I did it. I did hit him in the head. I know it's against the rules, uh, but why do, why, why do I get eight games? <laughs> oh, we, again, we've got a lot of cases. We've got Rafi Torres. We've got, we've got Tom Wilson. Oh, we could be here all night. Yeah. Right. It, it, you know, you can roll them all up. But, but the reason I'm bringing up other names here is it, it just goes on and off. And, and yeah. rather than eradicate it, clean it up, make it a better, let all these other good storylines, you know, that I, I, that I enumerated, let, let those carry the day. This, and this will just, just like fighting in the OHA, it'll go away and people will like the product. Don't be afraid of being liked. That's why we're here. <laughs> we got to take the break and we'll, um, we'll switch gears. Time is going to be our enemy here in a minute, but um, four series ongoing, we'll kind of wade through those when uh, we come back after these messages. Bob McCowan, it's uh, John Shannon, Mike Zeisberger of NHL.com. Kevin Paul DuPont of the Boston Globe are here. Well, we talk hockey. Let's, well, we have been, John. I know, no. I, I know that's, you know, I'm talking what's on the ice, Bob. I'm talking related. what's on the ice. Come on. Come on, what? I'm talk saying we're talk, talk, I, I'm trying to be positive. You know, talk about the games, how great the games are. Well, it's interesting. You only bring that up when we talk about hockey. When we talk about other sports, you're more than happy to slag the crap out of them. Oh, stop it. That's not uh, true. You know Bruins that. Islanders. Um, are you surprised by how close this series apparently is and will continue to be? Um, Mr. DuPont, it is uh, your hometown team. If no, you I'm not, not surprised. I thought, you know, you could pick either side in six or seven. I picked the Bruins in six because I like the fact that they've got better scoring across the first and second lines. They finally got dependable five on five. Uh, Rask is one of one of the handful of excellent goalies in the league. All that stuff. Terrific coaching as well. Thought their vulnerability was defense. It's, it's even more underscored now because I think Carlo's going to be gone for a while with a concussion um, and they've already had already lost Miller or hoping Miller comes back. They've lost camphor. They've lost more to surgery. So they're, they're getting thin back there. Uh, the Islanders don't score much, but they've got a terrific structure, discipline, trots a terrific coach. So again, rule book, uh, rules, serendipity, all of it, re a real close series. And I, I suspect it will go six or seven and it, it will be a coin flip. The amazing nice thing for me is that, this is a team that 12 months ago on the back end had Zdeno Chara, uh, had Tori Krug. Those guys are not there now, uh, obviously. Um, and they're getting even thinner uh, with every, every game. And yet, whoever they put in there, it's, you know, kind of like that Patriots uh, saying, and it was interesting to see... Uh, the hoodie Bill Belichick wearing his Bruins cap the other day, but uh, next man up. And it's amazing because that back end by all, you know, when you, when you look at it uh, on paper um, should be a flaw after Charlie McAvoy and maybe Grislick. Um, and these guys have been playing over their heads, but then again, you know what guys, we could say that about the entire New York Islanders team. And all of a sudden, you look at what Lou Lamorello has done there. Since Lou left Toronto, he's won four playoff series and is in the middle of a fifth. So given what we've gone through uh, here in Southern Ontario, uh, Lou's doing a pretty good job. So I, I think the case can be made for both these teams that they uh, have done very well of, of playing over their weaknesses. Shannon? Well, I, I tell you, I mean, to me, the Islanders are like gnats. They just keep coming at you. They don't stop. It's, you know, it's the next guy over the boards. And, and for me, on the, on the positive side, is that's really impressive that no matter who they put out there, they're going to play the same way. The disappointment for me from an Islander perspective, and we saw a glimpse of it last night, is that Matthew Barzell is an elite hockey player. Uh, but he's been made, in, in my opinion, at times he's been made ordinary because of the system. Um, mm. But, you know, he scores last night and for a glimpse for about a five or six minute glimpse, you saw that fire in his eyes one more time, as opposed to playing the system, which was fun to watch. Um, the, the other thing on the other side of the, of the ledger is that I think the reason the Bruins have played so well at times defensively is because 
their forwards buy in better than anybody else too. And, and I'm talking about forwards that have never bought into play in defense before. Dare I mention Taylor Hall. Taylor Hall. I mean, setting up the, setting up the, the Craig Smith goal last night was a back check by Taylor Hall. And that's where the influence of, a, of whether it's uh, Bruce Cassidy or particularly, I think, his teammates, guys like Bergeron, Marchand, Pasternak, I, I think t- team defense, I think the Bruins do it masterfully. And then you do have Rask on top of that, who had an unbelievable overtime period before the goal was scored and made two great saves and, and gave the Bruins life and a chance to score that winning goal. Uh, moving on. I, um, and I, I, I tend to agree with uh, DuPont here. Um, I think the Bruins are the favorites in this series definitively. Um, you don't overlook the possibility the Islanders could put all, pull off magic, but the Bruins should be the better team. Tampa Bay Carolina is a little closer, and that's interesting because you have the defending Stanley Cup champions who have their best player back, I guess. And um, and this Carolina team, you could have said, is a bit of a mirage during the regular season. Who knew? But I'm not sure who the better team in that in that series is. Z? I wouldn't say that. That I'm not surprised by Carolina. I saw glimpses of it last year. I think that they're top six forwards. Um, you know, when you go Spechnikov and, and Aho is just a wonderful, wonderful player. I think that uh, as much as, you know, we talk about him, he may be one of the more underrated guys or less publicized guys for his skill level. There's a reason the Habs went after him and gave him that offer sheet. Um, but even on defense, when, you know, Hamilton and Pesci and, and we can go down the list, um, I, I, I'm not surprised by Carolina. What I am surprised at is that they went with the rookie goaltender this far until they changed it up last night. But um, no, I, 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 I think that Carolina, of, of all the teams that kind of could surprise in these playoffs, um, they were the ones that I, I kind of pointed to and said, watch out for them. Trouble is, uh, you're going up against the Tampa Bay team that learned to play a different style last year, won the cup and knows what it means to win. I, I I'm just totally intrigued by this series. DuPont. I, I have to say if I, if I were a betting man, and I guess we're all going to be betting men the way the, the way the industry is going. Uh, odds are. Yeah. Odds are. So <laughs> uh, I get, I gave uh, Carolina no chance in this series. Uh I was surprised last night. I wasn't able to watch, but I was surprised to look up last night and they never trailed. They got up two, uh, and it goes to OT. So good for them. Uh, I'm a little bit sort of, I guess, biased because I saw Brendan Moore badly outcoached by uh, Cassidy the last time they met in the playoffs. It, Bruins ran him out of the building in four straight. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm just not that impressed by them. Uh, that said, obviously, what, the, what they've done here is impressive. Um, especially with, as, as Ice is talking with, with the rookie goaltender, I'm just a, a huge believer in in Cooper and, and mm. Tampa's ability to yes. score their grit sure. factor. Uh, you the know, grit uh, factor that they learned to play with last year, Kev. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and and brought in some significant pieces at the end yep. to fill that out. Uh, it, there's just so much I like about it. I love I love the goaltender. I, I, they're, 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 everything about them. I. I, I just think that they're a far better team. Well, you know, they're, they're only a deflection away of being up three, nothing. Let's face it. They're a, they're, a, they're a deflection what? off Jordan Stahl's knee of being up three, nothing. Uh, and to, uh, I'm, they are so reminiscent uh, for me of teams that we have seen in previous decades that are on the verge of being dynastic. You know, the Leafs of the sixties, uh, Montreal of the seventies, maybe even the Islanders of the eighties because role players come and make such a difference. Alex Kalorn has been so good for this team in these playoffs. I mean, I I would tell you right now, if if I, if everybody talks about, you know, the big guys and Kucherov's got all the points and, you know, and I, I, I hate doing this, but Conn Smythe, you know, playoff MVP, second round, we shouldn't even be talking about it. But I'll tell you, I think Alex Kalorn has been the most valuable player as, or the, the best forward for this team through the first two rounds. 
I, that's how good I think he's been. And he's not even on the top six at times. Right. That's how, that's how good and deep they are. Uh, and you know, nobody's won a home ice game yet in that series. Uh, but I, I fully expect uh, that that will change quickly. Vegas, Colorado uh, play tonight. Uh, Colorado wins both games at home, the first two at home, uh, a blowout in the first game, which maybe you can attribute to Vegas going through seven and Colorado sweeping the opening round. Maybe. Maybe you can attribute it to a curious decision to for Vegas to change their goaltending. Um, game two was an overtime game. I mean, overtime game could have gone either way. Um, but I get the sense that all year long, the team everybody has been looking at, especially you two hockey pucks, is Colorado. There's as three of team. us here, you know, there's three of us here, three hockey pucks. Yeah, but he's got some hope for me and Zeiss. He's got no hope. <laughs> no. Uh, the Colorado's it. Like, Colorado's the team everybody's got their eye on. Yeah. Um, still agreed? Z? Yeah. I mean, I had them. I picked them before the season uh, uh, to beat Tampa in the final. I don't change my mind now. And I think that what we forget sometimes is that how good this Colorado team was last year before their goaltending situation where the guys were going down like dominoes and it ended up being Michael Hutchison, um, you know, that their season relied upon. Right. And I, I just think the way that we saw Grubauer the other night uh, play w was outstanding. This is a team that hasn't needed a goalie to win them a game very much, but when they did, he was there. And the other thing, guys, this Rant Ranton and Landeskog McKinnon line, they played six games and they've combined for 34 points. So, you know, yeah, you can say, oh, well, teams will change up their defense against them. Well, every team tries to do that. And I think, you know, we talk about the entertainment factor. I think that right now, watching the Colorado Avalanche skate at a different speed than it seems everybody else um, is wildly entertaining and fun to watch. Vegas got any chance, Kevin? I'm sorry, I missed it. Has Vegas got any chance oh, in this no, series? I don't think so. I was gonna, I was gonna build on Mike's point there. Go he right brought right. up all that and didn't mention Kale McCarr. Right. Uh, which well, I got to leave something for you, Kev. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So it, such a terrific player, and 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 so as much as I love Tampa, I love Colorado plus, and the fact of there being McCarr, and and I agree, totally agree with everything that Zeiss has said there. I, I will go back. To where you started. By the way, if you're bringing up a defenseman, Victor Hedman's on the line for you, but enough well, I, of that. I know, I know. And, and, and you, you talk about distinguishing factors, right? I mean, Kalorn, yes, but uh, you know, I, I love him. So the, 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 uh, the point I was going to make, though, Bob, from where you kicked this portion off was I, I really think, you know, the, the Players Association should sit down and talk about getting, getting to the next series after playing seven within 48 hours. If, if there's a bargaining point to be made, I would say though that series, that next series for that team, you got to wait 72 hours, give them a couple days. Yeah. Because that's what led to the, I think that's what led to the goaltending decision, you know, the fatigue <clears throat> factor of, and all of that. So that, 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 that would have been the easiest bet in town in my mind and it proved, proved to be. Uh, so we have those three series. Um, I don't think anybody would argue the favorites are in front. Montreal, Winnipeg, mm -mm. no way. Um, not so much. Might be now, though. It's one game. Um, it probably doesn't necessarily mean a lot. Montreal, if I remember in the first round, beat the Maple Leafs in the first game and then lost three straight. Mm -hmm. Well, then we know what happened then. Uh, the, the curse of the, of the uh, Ballard. Um, we got to have or, a better name than that. We got to have a better name than that. Yeah, curse of the Ballard. Be. Come on. Uh, uh, well, the Ballardino. <laughs> uh, the point of this, I guess, to me is you start wondering about if we really misread this Montreal team or are they just playing like they got magic in their pants? Because um, they shouldn't have beat the Toronto Maple Leafs and they shouldn't beat the Winnipeg Jets especially after the Jets 
looked like they corrected all the flaws that they had late in the regular season by wiping out Edmonton. They, they, they shouldn't be this good. Well, what the hell's going on? Who are these guys? Here, here's one of the things, Bob, too, is the fact that, yeah, Carey Price has played great. Oh, he's played how good. Many, he's played many, well. Games, but he many, hasn't stolen games. No, that's exactly my point. Um, maybe we should have seen this a little bit in last year's playoffs in the bubble. Um, when they disposed of the Pittsburgh Penguins, you can say what you want about the Penguins. They still had Malkin. They still had Crosby. Yeah, a lot of changes in Montreal, though. This isn't yeah, really the same but who team. Are they, but who are the guys no. that are coming through? The yeah. young guys, Kokanyemi, Suzuki, right. uh, Jay Weber, who, um, you know, was banged up at the beginning of that Toronto series. With every single game, you've seen more of the Shea Weber that we're accustomed to seeing, save for the fact that he had a breakaway uh, the last game, and I looked outside to see if Haley's Comet was going by, because that's about how often that, that happens, but... The other thing about the Montreal Canadiens is that's got to be impressive is their starts, Bob. And the fact that in their, they've won four games in a row, they have not trailed once in those four games. And in those four games, they've had, they've jumped out to leads of three, nothing, two, nothing, three, nothing, two, nothing. So, you know what? I give Dominic Ducharme credit because whatever, but well, we're giving him credit. I'm just, I'm trying to say, why didn't you pea brains pick Montreal then? If this isn't shocking, it's shocking, isn't it? Because I, I tell you what, this, I, let me just, before Kevin jumps in, let me tell you, I, I think that what we didn't see from Montreal, particularly the last 20 games of the regular season was it was such a compacted schedule for them. They played so many games in such a few period of time because of the COVID issue. And they didn't oh, have Carey Price point. in goal and they didn't have Carey Price in goal. It no, was all, all Jake, it was Weber, all Jake Allen and Caden Gallagher. Primo. Yeah. No yeah. Weber, no Gallagher. Yeah. Kevin. Well, it, it, I have to preface this by saying, as the guy who grew up in Boston here, it, 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 is, it is so heartwarming, finally, to see the Habs get a break in life. <laughs> it's, it's, it's made my spring, really has. Oh. Um, and it, we could have a Montreal-Boston Stanley Cup final coming. Fine by me. Yeah, fine by me, especially now. So uh, I, I would say, at, at, the, at the risk of pissing off, 3.2 of million of the 3.2 million viewers. I just think it underscores what clay pigeons the Leafs were. That oh, yeah. that, that 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 team could beat this Leafs team. It, it, if 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 you know Shanahan at way, all. By the way, you ain't pissing them off because they're pissed off uh, enough. Believe me, you, can, yeah. you can't get any higher. Well, they should be. I mean that 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 should have been over in four based yep. on based on skill level, right? So. Yep. That, they're, they're, that's just, uh, to me, that's shocking. And I'm, I'm trying to come up with a parallel. A lot of people here in Boston are s still not over 1971 that the, you know, the powerhouse Bruins went in and got smoked by the seven games by Canadians. Well, well, guess what? Canadians had 10 hall of fame players in the lineup. That's not this Montreal team, right? No. Oh, no, it isn't. You know, I don't know where those guys are going, but, but uh, so that, that shouldn't have happened. Toronto's got to really look at that. And, I, and to me, it's obvious. You know, they've spent their $40 million on four guys up front, and the, and the rest of it is just cannon fodder by my eye. There, there, there's, there's lots of reasons why Montreal's doing this. Do not underestimate the role of a guy like Corey Perry, who has been through the wars, knows how to play this grinding playoff hockey better than everybody else, probably on the ice on both teams, uh, and has probably – achieved a, a, a place as a, as a pseudo assistant coach in that room to tell guys, Hey, listen, here's what to expect. I, I think Corey Perry deserves a ton of credit for a signing in Montreal. Cause he wanted to sign in Toronto signing in Montreal and playing a really key role in helping a lot of guys get, get through that first round playoff series. Wow. Well, and what is exciting is to see a team like this start to believe in itself. This is another great you know, and often the storyline in the playoffs. Yeah, a fairy tale. A, yeah. yeah, a team with middle of the road talent, start to believe in itself, get yep. some good goaltending, you know, pl play honest, structured hockey, and, and, and beat the perceived behemoths. I just don't think the Leafs were the behemoth that many perceived. Uh, I'm, I'm with you, and, and um, it, the argument can be, has been made, and will continue to be made, that the Toronto Maple Leafs didn't get beaten by Montreal. Maple Leafs got beaten by themselves. Yep. And yet, and yet, 
and we are only one game in. They went into Winnipeg and beat yeah. Winnipeg too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's the intriguing thing as we get ready for game two in that series. Winnipeg can still win the series, though, Bob. Winnipeg can still win. Of course they can. Still win. Yeah. They're, course good, they can. they're a good they hockey, They're a good, deep hockey team. But if they if they don't have Shifley, well, we know we don't have Shifley for four games. And then the question mark is whether Paul Stasty will be ready for the rest of the series is another question. So, well, uh, we've seen plenty of cases of uh, underdogs who come into the pl uh, the postseason or championship series or championship games, and you think they got no chance, and they pull a rabbit out of their hat. Is this Montreal team that team? None of us think so, but we can't be sure at least not yet. Uh, boys, we have kept you longer than we should have. Um, I blame Shannon for being overtly ber uh, verbose. Oh my goodness. Um, That's a four game I, suspension right there. I of course had nothing to do with this. Kevin, I'm um, second that. <laughs> we will uh, bid you, we will bid you a fond to do at least for a couple of weeks or whenever. Um, End of the next round. End of the next round. They'll be back. They'll be back for the, 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 uh, the, not the, not the conference finals, the semifinals. Thank you uh, to both of you, and uh, we'll see you anon. Uh, Mike Zeisberger, Kevin Paul DuPont. Unfortunately, Shannon and I will be back, albeit briefly, after these messages. <laughs> uh, and we're back, and again, our thanks to Mike Zeisberger, Kevin Paul DuPont, uh, for uh, joining us. One quick thing. Yes, sir. Off of hockey. The uh, LA Lakers lost last night. Mm -hmm. to the Phoenix Suns and have been eliminated from the playoffs. If I'm not mistaken, it's the first time LeBron has lost in the first round. I think you're right. I mean, it, it, it's, uh, it, it makes you wonder. Um, I mean, I think knowing LeBron, knowing the Lakers, I would not be surprised to see changes made there. I really wouldn't. I, I wouldn't be surprised. Well, player to changes see. or coaching both, change? Both, both, both. Both. Well, their supporting cast clearly isn't good enough. Should have, they should have traded for Kyle Lowry to get a point guard? They should have. They should have given the they should have given the Raptors enough to get a point guard for that team. Well, because... perhaps that would have got them by Phoenix. Although you know, I have been more than lukewarm on this Phoenix team for um, yes, I know, a I know, year. I know. I've been saying, watch out for these guys. Yeah, and um, I don't know whether they're a championship team yet, but they're pretty good. That's a, and, and the Chris Paul story alone yeah, is a fantastic Phoenix. story. And he's, he's wounded. Yeah. He's yeah. playing at half, half mast. Yeah. You know, if he was healthy, yeek, I'd make them. I'm not sure they're not the favorite to win the West. I know Utah's good. Utah's really good. Bob. I know they're good, but I'm not counting this Phoenix team out. This is something. And, and is I tell you what, I, yeah, I know that uh, Jamal Murray's not playing and he won't be back, but a Denver team. That Denver team is really good too. Well, they're good too, but you know what? They I might have my favorite player in the NBA on it right now. He's he's I, amazing. I would, I'll tell you what, John. I would, and we got to go. I would love if Phoenix wins this for this reason. They essentially didn't do anything the way the other teams are doing things now, loading up with the two or three stars. Right. We we know Brooklyn has done it. We know Oklahoma City did it. They had it and gave it away. Uh, the Lakers did it. Miami did it when they won a championship. Even Cleveland went out and got guys and, and to help. Phoenix really hasn't. No. They got, That's they what know. I like about both Phoenix and Utah. I think Utah has done it the same way. Utah's so. is sort of the same thing. Yeah. It'd be nice to see one of them win and observe what happens in the offseason <laughs> with all of the big name free agents, maybe mm -hmm. all of a sudden the process of how you build a champion might be altered once again. Indeed. We'll uh, see you. Uh, have, well, have a nice weekend, Mr. Shannon. I will try if I don't get suspended. And well, there's always that. Yeah. Of course, it's, if, if uh, the National Hockey League is giving you the suspension, it'll probably be for two minutes. I'll be ready for Monday then. <laughs> uh, we'll see you Monday. Uh, thank you all for uh, watching, listening, or whatever the hell you're doing. Uh, see you then. Goodbye, everybody.